Hello everyone. So it seems I've gotten myself into a bit of a state here. Um, far, messing around, you know, messing around with the computer a little bit, just kind of playing around. I've gotten myself into a state where um, no matter what I do, I, uh, I seem to get out of memory error. So I think it's about time for a cold reset. So we're going to control alt. I can't, really can't see it in the frame, but control alt and we'll just do the reset. Oh, Tandy rules, Commodore drools. Well, that's not the regular Three Mugateers picture, and that's because I replaced it. So I take a cover, take the cover off the machine here, and here you can see I have my EEPROM in there. If you watched my OS 9 Level 2 and ROM video, that's the same EEPROM. Now reprogrammed with Extended Color Basic and my own little custom logo on the in place of the Mugateers image. So uh, if you've seen my OS 9 video, you know I'm a fan of HVAC foil tape over the ROM windows. It's a little bit tougher to peel off, but it doesn't go anywhere. So anyway, how did I do this? Um, obviously, aside from burning the picture in ROM, how did I make this picture? How did I get it into the ROM? So we're going to go over that in this video. Um, for those of you that just like to see the end result, well, it's done, and I just saved you 15 minutes. Otherwise, follow me to the Tandy 4825. In the spirit of using as many Tandy computers as possible for my projects, um, which I tend to do whenever I can, I wanted to create the image on another platform and see if I could convert it into the proper format to display correctly on the color computer's low resolution graphic screen or high resolution low res graphic screen however you want to do it so the author's picture is a p-mode 4 256 by 192 image um, of course a 256 by 192 in p-mode 4 one 6k page gets you two colors a bit per pixel so that was a pretty easy one to manage I wouldn't have to manage color data it was on or off and um, paint programs like Paintbrush here, which this is my uh, 4825 running OS 2, and uh, Windows 3.1 on WinOS 2. I decided I would create the image here and make it a monochrome bitmap 256 by 192. After saving the image in bitmap format, I had to go do a little research. I'm not an image person. I don't do pictures or graphics or anything like that. So um, for those of you that do this on a regular basis, um, my knowledge here is very rudimentary, and it's what I kind of dug up doing this. Uh, graphics ain't my thing. What I ended up doing was digging up a little information on the bitmap format, figuring out what I could strip off and where the image data was. I can skip the first 62 bytes, and that's where the image data begins. So once the image is created and saved, I copied it out to my Raspberry Pi, where I can strip out the bitmaps headers and stuff. So at least for the paint clients I've been using, the bitmap header and everything else is 62 bytes. I don't know if that's static or not. Um, you know, I've read that the bitmap spec has changed over the years, but I don't know how that works. But a Windows Paint client on Windows 10, which I did use to make some of the other images you'll see today, and uh, the Paint application on Windows 95, as well as Windows 3.1's Paintbrush, seem to all do about the same thing here. So now that the image is over to the Pi, I have an SSH client here. Uh, I did finally put a network card in the 4825, so. I wouldn't recommend using this SSH client or any older SSH client for anything you care about, but for a project Raspberry Pi, I figured this was a great way to involve an old machine um, and get a little OS2 time in, because I'm a really big, really big fan of OS2. So anyway, uh, what I have to do is strip off the bitmap header, so let's do that first. So um, I should be able to DDIF equals Tandy rules. Okay, PS equals 1, uh, skip equals 62, count equals 6144, OF equals uh, raw.bin. Okay, now I have 6K out. Now, at this point, I should have just the raw image data. I have to, before I want to put it into ROM, I have to make sure that the image is going to come out correctly, that everything's going to look right. So what I wanted to do is put it into a, a format where I could load it into the color computer and take a look at the image by basically loademing it into RAM and then just turning on the P mode for screen and looking and see what the image looks like. So to do that, I have, I mean, it really should be called preamble and postamble. Um, if you saw my deload video, the color computer bin format reminds me a lot of deload in that it allows you to specify in the preamble a preamble byte, that's 00, zero the number of bytes to load, um, 1800, this is in hexadecimal, so that would be six, 6144 or 6K, and the start address of where the where the byte should be loaded. And this is repeated by more and more blocks of however many size the computer will just read the next 6144 bytes and look for another flag telling it what to do. 
Uh, and then I have a post amble here, FF, meaning it's, it's the end of the file. And then 0E00 is the execution address. Um, in theory, I should set it to something else like the start of the reset routine or whatever, because if you EXEC on a picture, the machine's going to crash. But um, just don't EXEC it for testing purposes on the one that created it. I'll know not to. So this is easy enough to create an image file. Okay, so all I have to do here is say cat header. Um, we're going to do what I say raw.bin footer, and I'm going to call this um, new pick dot bin. Okay, good enough. Now what I'm going to do is simply copy this over to the Coco SDC. So to do that, we're going to have to move over to my other laptop here. All right, so I'm going to refresh my files here, and here's my new pick dot bin that I just created. So I'm going to drag that over here, and I'm going to use the toolshed tools to copy the file new.bin and this is going to become new pick and we'll just oops, pick .disk. there it is okay so let's get my SD card out of the Coco SDC and let's pop it in there okay and there's my pick.disk I'm just going to copy that and here I have an SDC folder as you can see on the SD card, I use this for, its name is Model 4. <laughs> I, I have stuff for many of the machines on here. Okay, so everything's on here. Let's just eject this puppy. And take it over to the Coco and see what the image looks like. We're loaded up with the SDC. Let's get the disk mounted with the image on it, and we'll see what it looks like. I hope my arm's not in the frame there. If it is, I apologize. Okay, so before I load this, I'm going to set up the P mode 4 screen and see what that looks like. So, P mode 4 1, 30, 30. Okay, now since I booted up, it's just whatever garbage is in RAM. But since I already created my image file with my header and footer, the f I can load on this picture in. And one thing I should note, in the preamble, you notice that I use the address 0E00. Uh, one thing about the video, low resolution video memory in the color computer is its location is not static. So if you don't have the disk controller plugged in, disk basic or anything else, you'll generally find that at 600 hex. If not, then you need a way to find where it is. So the way that you can do that actually is there is a couple of, there's an address in RAM that you can peek at to see where it is. So where did I get 0E00 from? Well, I'll show you um, before I go to load this picture, actually. A little like detour, but either way. Question peak. Actually, let's do a dollar sign. Peak and H B A. Okay, that's E. And we'll just check the next address. And you see what it is, you're gonna be like, well that was overkill. E00. So that tells me that the picture can be found, or the low resolution text screen, page one, I should say, the beginning can be found at hex E00 in RAM, which is why I did that. So if you are going to go load emming a picture into memory, you need to make sure that the file you write has the right load address or that you specify it when you load em. So in this case, I think the load em one's an offset, so you'd have to set it low and then offset it. Either way, load em, oh, let's see what I call it. New. Okay, now you remember the screen before was just garbage. Now, you probably knew where I was going with this if you know anything about bitmap and how the color computer's memory work. I did not. I'm doing this to learn about it. So, one thing I learned is it's not exactly right. It's upside down. So, you can see the horizontal bytes are lined up correctly. The T and everything left to right were good, but the vertical is flipped on its axis. It's almost like it's mirrored. And, like I said, I didn't know anything about bitmap format or how the image data was stored. Um, but, or, you know, versus how the color computer interprets um, bits in memory. Uh, so what I did end up doing was saying, well, all right, I'm sure that I can convert this. I just need to figure it out. Knowing that the bytes are in the correct order uh, left to right, and just that the rows were out of order, I figured I would write myself a little script to take care of it. So here we are back at the 4825SX, and I have myself a little program I'm calling BMP to Coco, which actually doesn't strip off the bitmap header, eventually it will, which is why I call it that, but for now, this is just a short and stupid Python script um, that goes through and takes the image, the 6K image, and stores it into a 
a two-dimensional array. And then what I do is I, I read the entire file in, store the entire thing in the two-dimensional array, and then I literally run through the rows backwards, but write the bytes in the order that they came in from the file. So, for example, um, what is row 192 on the bitmap file becomes row 1, um, 1 becomes 192, and everything else in between. But the bytes within those rows come out in the same order that they would otherwise. So let's see what that's going to look like. So here I'm going I'm to quit that, and I'm going to run this. Um, so, by the way, this is because it's it's a very prototypical program. It, it's dumb, really. Uh, you can see I hard coded the names in there. So it's just going to look for raw.bin, which I have right here, um, and that is from now. So let's just do that. So if I just run bit cobo, and now I should have a proc raw.bin 1839, which is the UTC date. Great. So now I have a, a proc raw.bin. So what I'm going to do is copy that rockraw.bin to tandy.bin and we're gonna go take a look at that over on the color computer again. We're back. We have a combination to the air shield. Okay, no we don't, but we do have a tandy bin on here. Um, one other thing I just thought, um, this would be a great use for drive wire. I just don't have a drive wire server loaded up then I wouldn't have to do the SDC shuffle with the SD card. But um, I, most of these images I preloaded, but just to show you the process of how I got it over here, sans drive wire. I did that. But anyway, here we go. So now if I run the same program, of course, you see that now it is in the correct order. So all I did was left to right, um, the, the second dimension of the array, I read back in the same order I read it in from the file, or I wrote it out in the same order I got it back from the file. But what I did was I stepped through the array in reverse. So I loaded the image array in memory from the bitmap, and then went from 192 down to 1, and wrote it into the file in, in that order. So I wrote out one row 192 first and 191 second all the way down to zero or all the way down to one I guess and that's it so I figured I would show a few other images that I came up with um, again I'm sorry for the hating on the Commodore theme um, I don't hate Commodore you'll I'll touch that again later in the video but um, I just thought it was kind of funny so anyway you can see I have a few images here we've seen uh, new and Tandy so um, the very first one that I did I hand drew um, just to see what I could get. Oh, maybe with 20. I must have typed something here between things. Okay. So that was the very first. I just drew it up before I got all fancy. I just wanted to hand draw it. And I hurt. See, Commodore sucks, but love TJB Chris. Because, you know, why the hell not? Um, now, this is the very first image I did. This is the first one that got flipped. Um, and then I did another one. And this was the one that I had originally burned into ROM, actually. Um, I have a short video that I made on my phone. Maybe I'll include it here just because. But I originally did this and used a C Commodore logo and just said they suck. But I thought that was a little a little rough. I think Tandy rules, Commodore drools is a little better. So, you know, if you see again here, I'll just uh, flash back out. I hope I didn't mess up the screen too much there. But So if I just uh, I'm reset this, if I do Control-Alt-Reset, there we are. Tandy rules, Commodore drools. Um, I should note the difference in color is only because of the color set that the system is choosing. Um, when you control alt reset and it does the cold reset routine, the routine that draws the picture into memory picks the other color set. I'm not picking the other color set. There's nothing different about the image. It's the same binary data. It's just a color set thing. Now let's get this into ROM. To get my newly header stripped and converted image file into the ROM, I have to basically paste the bytes in from the file that I created, the binary file into the correct place in ROM. So to do that, I'm going to use the EEPROM programmer software since it allows me to copy paste my binary data really easily and I can just do it all in one place. So I'm going to load my Tandy image here and I'm just going to start, start the file offset at zero. Now the file is only, it's only 6K, um, but I have, of course, it thinks that I'm going to program it to an EEPROM so it's padded the rest of zeros for 32K. Um, 6144 bytes, we'll go all the way down to 17FF, that's zero to 17FF or 1800 bytes in hex, that's 6144 or 6K. So this is my image. Actually, I want to be a little smarter about this. I will just do this. If I just control shift home, that should do it. Okay, so now I should have everything all the way down to oops, buy it. There we go, perfect. Okay, I'll copy that. Now we're gonna open. I took a copy of the original ROM and we're 
going to load that there. And now the image in ROM is at, in the Color Computer 3's memory map, is at C405, Charlie 405. That's the address for the auth picture starts. Um, of course, if you go looking there when the computer's on, you're not going to see it unless you put it in RAM ROM mode because as soon as the patching gets done, the ROM switches itself out to RAM. So if you switch into RAM ROM mode, you'll find the picture there. And that's at C405. But that's the Coco 3's memory map. And when in RAM ROM mode, the onboard ROM starts at hex address 8000, um, midway through the memory map. So the lower 32K for RAM, upper for ROM. So to get that in the right place in this ROM, I have to take C405 and subtract the base address that the color computer adds for its location in memory. So in this case, I said C405 minus 8000, and we're in hex, and that's 4405. So I know that the picture starts at offset 4405 in ROM, because again, the ROM starts at zero, as would be expected, um, but in mapping in the color computer 3, that zero will be 8000. So here we go. Let's go down to 4405, enough jabbering. That's 4450. There we go. And there's 4400. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to click, I'm going to paste, and that should be it. Um, I'm going to scroll through here, and that should be good. So now we're going to make sure I save as, we're going to wreck my copy of this. And this is going to be called CC3 ECB Tandy. Save. Now it's time to burn the ROM. So let's go get the ROM out of the drawer here. All right, I've retrieved the ROM from the programmer. And if you've seen my OS9 level 2 ROM video, you know that I'm partial to using HVAC foil tape over the programmer windows. So here what we're going to do is on this one, it orients along the bottom here. Just get that lined up. Looks good. Pull down. OK, we have our. ROM loaded. I'm just going to open this because the, t the title never says. Um, it doesn't change the name of the open file to the name of the one you just saved it as because this program's a little janky. Anyway, here we go. ECB Tandy, so I'm going to say Command Write. I'm writing the ROM. Very good. That's easy. Okay, here we go. So let's remove the ROM and let's go install it. Okay, so here's my socket and I'm just going to line this up. I hope I'm not too much in the frame. The big thing is just making sure I line all the pins up just, oop, just right. And what I'm going to do with this, push it down. Okay, we're going to click it on and see if we hear the click. If I hear the, the cassette relay open again, I know we're good. Perfect. I don't know if that was audible on camera. Perfect. Let's put the uh, keyboard rest back on. Reinstall the keyboard. And put the keyboard connector back in. I try and be as careful as I can with this. All right, so now we're going to see if it starts. So moment of truth, here we go. Will it power up? Again, I mean, I powered up before, so it'll power up again. Now let's see if the image is there. Cold reboot. There it is. Tandy rules, Commodore rules. I honestly think I'm going to keep this in there. Uh, again, I don't hate Commodore, but at all. Actually, I've never been a Commodore guy, but I will say that uh, I remember many, many spirited debates. It's like the Ford versus Chevy camp. Of course, then you throw someone in with a Dodge, like an Atari owner, and it's just all hell breaks loose. Same kind of thing here. Um, you know, the wars of the 80s, and I guess they still kind of go on. Although I will say, what differentiated the, differentiated the color computer for me versus a couple of friends who had Commodore 64s, anyway, um, was a real operating system, like OS 9. For a home computer in the price range that it was, and I realized the Amiga had a real OS, but um, the Amiga's price range was a whole lot different than the color computer. So... To be able to get something like OS 9 in a real operating system with the kind of power and flexibility you get with it on a home computer like this was uh, a differentiator for the color computer, aside from graphical capabilities and other things with the 3. Um, so I figured this is all in good fun, so all you Commodore people out there, don't don't flame me. Just a little good humored fun. And as a Tandy user, my color computer decrees. Tandy rules, Commodore drools. That's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.